So, you know that feeling when you're munching on some popcorn, watching your favorite Marvel movie, and suddenly you realize something's off? Well, hold on to your seats, cause we're about to dive into some serious Marvel mayhem. Alright, picture this. Kang the Conqueror, the big bad in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But wait, there's trouble in paradise. See, Kang, played by Jonathan Majors, is stirring up more drama than a daytime soap opera. Accusations flying, panic brewing, and Marvel execs scrambling like squirrels in a peanut factory. But why the panic, you ask? Well, turns out, Marvel's money-making machine ain't churning out the cash like it used to. And with Kang caught in a domestic violence storm, Marvel's considering swapping him out for Doctor Doom. But hold up, ain't the Fantastic Four still on vacation? Alright, let's unpack this wild idea of bringing back the OG Avengers for a revival flick. Now, we all know Iron Man, Black Widow, and the gang left an indelible mark on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They were the backbone, the heart, and the soul of the franchise. But here's the thing, resurrecting them through multiverse shenanigans feels like a cheap ploy to cash in on nostalgia. Sure, we'd love to see our favorite heroes back in action, but not at the cost of diluting their legacy. It's like trying to recapture lightning in a bottle, a risky move that could either reignite the box office magic or fizzle out like a damn firecracker. And let's not forget the inherent risks of messing with the multiverse. Time traveling plotlines, alternate realities, and paradoxes galore. It's enough to give even the most seasoned comic book fan a headache. Plus, bringing back characters who've had their curtain call could cheapen the emotional weight of their sacrifices. So. While the prospect of an Avengers reunion may sound enticing, Marvel needs to tread carefully to avoid tarnishing the heroes we've all grown to love. Now, on to Miss Marvel and the impending disaster known as the Marvel's movie. Marvel's been touting Miss Marvel as the next big thing, the heir to Spider-Man's throne. But here's the harsh truth. The hype surrounding Miss Marvel is as empty as a villain's threat in a Saturday morning cartoon. The Marvel's movie projected to flop harder than a fish out of water, is a prime example of biting off more than you can chew. Let's talk characters. Nobody's clamoring for a Miss Marvel-centric storyline. And let's be real, introducing a slew of new faces without proper development is a recipe for disaster. Add in the obligatory homework assignments disguised as prequels, and you've got a cinematic misfire waiting to happen. Audiences want substance. They want depth. They want a reason to invest in these characters, but with the Marvels, it feels like Marvel's throwing darts blindfolded, hoping something sticks. And then there's the directional dilemma. Nia DaCosta's disappearing act mid-production raises more questions than answers. Leaving the editing room in disarray while the movie's still in the oven? It's a recipe for disaster, folks. With so much riding on the Marvels' success, Marvel can't afford to drop the ball. But with each misstep, it feels like they're careening closer to the edge of a cinematic cliff. Let's just hope they can course correct before it's too late. Let's peel back the layers on the ongoing debacle surrounding Kang the Conqueror. It seems like Marvel's golden boy isn't quite living up to the hype. Reports from insiders paint a grim picture of Kang's storyline, a tangled web of strikes, rewrites, and uncertainty. The result? A narrative that's about as coherent as a Rubik's Cube in a hurricane. And let's not forget the elephant in the room, the CGI villain future. While computer-generated baddies have their place, relying too heavily on them can feel like cheating. Fans crave depth, complexity, and real stakes, not just flashy effects and hollow threats. With Kang's fate hanging in the balance, it's clear that Marvel's playing a risky game of superhero roulette. But what's the root cause of Kang's catastrophic spiral? Some point to Marvel's frantic attempts to keep pace with its own success. With each new installment, the pressure mounts to outdo the last, leading to rushed storylines and half-baked character arcs. And in the case of Kang, it seems like Marvel may have bitten off more than it can chew. Here's hoping they can steer the ship back on course before it's too late. Ah, 2020. The year of Corona, Zoom meetings, and Marvel's ill-fated attempt to flood the market with content. What started as a noble endeavor quickly spiraled into chaos, leaving audiences scratching their heads and wondering, what happened? The answer, it seems, lies in Marvel's ambitious strategy to dominate the streaming landscape. But in their haste to churn out new material, they lost sight of what made their cinematic universe so beloved in the first place. Quality over quantity. With too much on their plate and not enough time to digest it all, 
Marvel found themselves drowning in a sea of lackluster content. It's a cautionary tale for the ages. Sometimes, less is more. And let's not forget the toll it took on Marvel's behind-the-scenes talent. From writers to directors to VFX artists, everyone felt the strain of Marvel's pandemic predicament. Long hours, tight deadlines, and creative burnout became the new normal, leaving many wondering if it was all worth it. As the dust settles and the pandemic fades into memory, Marvel faces a stark reality. They can't rely on quantity to make up for quality. It's time to go back to basics, to focus on crafting compelling stories that resonate with audiences, pandemic or no pandemic. Only then can Marvel reclaim its rightful place as the reigning king of superheroes. Kevin Feige, the architect behind Marvel's cinematic empire, is revered as a visionary in the realm of superheroes. However, even the most skilled conductor can find themselves overwhelmed when faced with their Herculean task of managing Marvel's sprawling universe. Like peanut butter thinly spread across toast, Faye's attention is stretched to its limits as he attempts to steer the ship through the choppy waters. The pressure to deliver blockbuster after blockbuster has left Feige juggling more plates than a circus clown, with each film requiring his meticulous oversight. But amidst the chaos of production, cracks begin to show. Last-minute scenes hastily tacked onto films, and wonky visual effects mar the final product, leaving fans scratching their heads. It's a far cry from the polished finish Marvel is known for, and Feige finds himself caught in the crossfire. As the beating heart of the Marvel machine, Feige shoulders the burden of its success and failures alike, and with each misstep, the weight of expectations only grows heavier, threatening to derail Marvel's carefully laid plans. And over at Disney, the VFX teams had enough. They're unionizing faster than you can say Avengers Assemble, long hours, low pay, and She-Hulk's budget bigger than Game of Thrones? Something's fishy in the House of Mouse. Let's dive deeper into the chaos surrounding Marvel's treatment of the iconic vampire hunter, Blade. Imagine this, a character known for his grit, his edge, his sheer badassery. Blade's been slicing through bloodsuckers like a hot knife through butter for years, carving up his place in the pantheon of comic book legends. But then, Marvel decides to shake things up. Five different writers take a crack at his story, each one seemingly veering further from the essence of what makes Blade, well, Blade. With two directors hopping on and off the project, like it's a malfunctioning roller coaster, it's clear there's turbulence ahead. And then, just when you think it can get any worse, the bombshell drops. Blade's daughter is poised to steal the spotlight. Now, don't get me wrong, family dynamics can add depth to a story, but sidelining the titular character for his offspring? That's like serving up a steak dinner and only giving you the side salad. It's a betrayal of everything Blade stands for, reducing him to a supporting role in his own narrative. But why the sudden change in direction? Some whisper it's the winds of woke culture blowing through Marvel's halls. Others speculate it's a misguided attempt at diversity gone awry. Alright, Superhero Squad, that's a wrap. Remember, in a world gone mad, sometimes all you need is a superhero in spandex to save the day. Hit that subscribe button, toss a like if you're feeling heroic, and until next time, stay super, stay sane, and never underestimate the power of good old-fashioned reboot. Peace out, true believers.